Hey, welcome to this sketchbook tour, which feels like such a massive milestone for a number of different reasons. One is that this is the most expensive sketchbook that I have ever completed. And two, it's a sketchbook that despite its cost, I really used to experiment. I played around. I tried new things. Not everything was a win, but I just created so many of my absolute favorite pieces in it. And I'm so excited to share that with you. This is the Etcher Signature Series Perfect Sketchbook. It comes in B5 size with 100% cotton watercolour paper. There's a version that has cold pressed paper, which has a brown cover, and a version that has hot pressed paper, which is a smooth paper, which is this blue cover here. It has deckled edges, it's vegan, it has a hard cover, a ribbon and a band to hold it all together and it's all in all incredibly well made but I think one of the things that makes it really stand out is the quality of the paper inside it. My all time favourite sketchbook is the cold press version of the Signature Series sketchbook. It just has such great beautiful paper with lots of lovely texture. If you are interested in these sketchbooks, the everyday sketchbooks or any of the incredible art supplies by Etcher, then be sure to check out the link down below and use the code SKETCHES10 for 10% off. And I get this because I am an ambassador. So I hope that you enjoy that discount and that you love these sketchbooks and these supplies as much as I do. Now, as I mentioned, my absolute favorite is the cold press version, but this for me has posed an issue, tiny issue. And that is that I just tend to be so precious with it you know it just takes me a really long time to work inside it I don't want to ruin it I see the whole thing as a as a collection and initially when I started with this one I started with a completely different approach and that is because the paper was super super smooth which is neither my preference nor my comfort <laughs> before you're like oh my gosh what kind of ambassador is this I'm just being honest as it stands at this moment in time cold press is still my favorite that being said I took it as a challenge upon myself to just try different things and so I started this wonderful sketchbook by doing some super super loose floral paintings and then going over them with dip pen as I said this is a completely different style to me it was something that I had been exposed to in an art workshop and I just felt so inspired and so joyful in the process I was like you know what brought out my sketchbook and just started creating and I absolutely loved the time that I had while doing this and would I look at this and say like oh my gosh they are perfect pieces no but I really like them I really enjoyed putting it together I really enjoyed using you know the dip pen and the quirks of it and I feel like it worked so well on the smooth paper and it also got me to appreciate using or controlling watercolor on a whole new kind of paper and from there I continued with the experimentation still with the dip pens and just putting color down having a rough idea of a bouquet in my head and then adding those extra details with the ink and the dip pen I was still holding on to you know that interesting habit of this sketchbook is too precious so the very first page I actually didn't paint I left it completely blank until the very end and then I created this piece and I absolutely love it I had such a good time putting it together it was inspired by the palette that I had put together with my art members for autumn and it's just a palette completely different to what I'm used to in terms of the fact that it leans a lot warmer than I usually do but I just love the way that they complement together I love the vibe of it I just really enjoyed this piece and I also enjoyed the fact that because the end paper is the same 100% cotton Fabriano artistical paper you can actually go across the whole thing without a gutter in the middle if that makes sense and I feel like if you've seen my other sketchbook tours and if you haven't I can leave them linked down below for you you'll know that um, you know usually I try to stick to one subject for one sketchbook but when it comes to my more experimental sketchbooks and the sketchbooks that I tend to have more fun in like this one I cross subjects I cross mediums and that's pretty much what I did I just had such a good time exploring a new palette on new paper and um, also just focusing on creating watercolor landscapes because I kind of feel like it's something that I've wanted to work on for a little while and um, more times than not I don't tend to so some of my favorite landscapes both watercolor and gouache were in this sketchbook 
If you are a member and you want to watch the replay of us creating this palette, then I will leave the video linked down below. And if you're not a member and you want to become one, then again, be sure to check out the link um, down below if you'd like more exclusive videos, art challenges, Zoom sessions, and art workshops as well. Now, as I mentioned, it was just a lot of fun putting together our own palette and creating this. And this is something that you can do yourself. Sometimes, you know, you want to like refresh your excitement for your art supplies, or you want to try something different or discover new New color combinations you can do all of that and more if you just try every so often to curate your own special little palettes and think about the little theme behind them and for us this time it was autumn and it was awesome continuing with that I created this piece again using that same autumnal palette and this one was a lot of fun for a number of reasons one I didn't have any internet so I couldn't get a reference photo and I actually decided to use my previous painting as inspiration for creating this painting so I was kind of using my imagination the previous painting and the autumnal palette and putting it all together putting paint down to paper and seeing what would happen and I really really enjoyed the results the little cottage on the side kind of happened by accident I loved the background all in all I was really happy with this and in fact I recorded the real-time process of creating it just so that I could talk through what I was thinking <laughs> in case anyone was interested in seeing it and I will put that up for my members in a little while and that is actually the very final piece that I ended up creating in this sketchbook so the order of the sketchbook is a little bit funny but it will soon become like chronological the painting on the right I actually created during a live stream so if you want to see the real-time process you can Every so often, I really enjoy going online and getting to chat with you as we create art together and we talk about art supplies and what we're doing in our art practice. And this evening was no different. I was using the Daniel Smith gouache, which I was really enjoying. And so I used any and all opportunities to actually just create gouache landscapes. It's funny because you'll see like I went through a floral phase, a mixed media phase, and then like a gouache landscape phase and then back to mixed media phase. Um, but now from now on it's like more chronological if that makes sense let me know in the comments which you prefer to do I know that both have like pros and cons so if you do it chronologically which basically means next page then page after then page after in order then you know you get to see how things progress so you get to see how your art changes and sometimes it's easier to note the changes in your art that way on the other hand sometimes that adds pressure whereas if you go random page and random page and random page then you're not necessarily for some um, adding that extra pressure so I'm just curious you know I think I have tried both and I know that this is technically in a random order but I feel like I prefer going in chronological order because then when I go through it I get to see like oh everything is you know I get to see the changes basically in a bit of a better way so I essentially created those loose florals first and then from there continuing on with the experimentation I moved to these kind of florals that are still a little bit more I guess my quote-unquote signature style um, with the backgrounds and the gold but I added lots of little details I really took my time with these pieces which is different to how I normally paint and I kind of used it as a nice meditative process where I was exploring with you know adding neo color twos to my florals and also adding extra line work and adding um, little tiny details that I wouldn't normally necessarily do and also like <laughs> at least to me a bolder color palette that I would have used in the past I was just having fun with both of these pieces and really just relaxing when I look at them I can see that there are certain things that I would change but there are also so many things that I really enjoyed doing and it was more of an exercise trying to figure out what kind of features and elements do I like adding to my bouquets that perhaps I haven't added in the past and the reason that this feels special is that um, I feel like I don't normally do this kind of experimentation in those sketchbooks you know I normally do that kind of experimentation on lower quality paper but there's something about actually doing it in a good quality sketchbook that makes a difference and felt like a breakthrough <laughs> now this paintings these paintings tried as I could I, I just don't like them I, I can't explain why I just I didn't like the colors I didn't like the composition 
I tried experimenting with those different elements again to kind of see what I like and what I don't like and that in itself just by the nature of the fact that I was experimenting is going to make it not necessarily my favorite piece but yeah I just I just really didn't like them and I tried the first one I didn't like it and then I tried the second one and I still didn't like it I think the only thing like you know with every painting and everything that you create is still worth trying to find something that you you feel is good or something that you think went well so that you know what to carry on next time as well as well as things that you won't do next time so I think that I really enjoyed the colors here in this rose and I enjoyed that kind of blush color in the leaves as well um but I think as a whole it just didn't work for me <laughs> which is um you know and and I I moved on the sketchbook is fine I'm still glad that it's here you know um, but yeah try I just I just couldn't get it right and I'm curious to know again in terms of like your sketchbook practices when you have pages that you don't like especially say it's a sketchbook like this where it's good quality ripping out the page isn't really an option what do you do do you rip out the page do you cover it do you paint over it do you gesso over it do you leave it as is curious let me know as you can see I left it as is I really like experimented a lot and then I moved on and you know what actually adds salt to this wound is so much for letting it go <laughs> is the fact that I was actually painting and creating this outdoors. So I'd actually gone to a cafe, set myself a little artist date, was painting, listening to music, drinking my favorite drink, living my best life and try it as I could. I just could not get this to look a way that I wanted. And then obviously I'm aware that, you know, any second now someone may come over and look over and be like, oh, what are you creating? But ultimately, even if that happens, Happens. it doesn't matter I still had a wonderful day I'm still glad that it's in my sketchbook and I persevered I don't know why like I created the first one I didn't like it I created the second one I didn't like it and then I created a third one this time in a different sketchbook not to say that it was the paper that was making a difference but I was just like I can't keep <laughs> I can't keep like wasting pages in this sketchbook and the final one I actually liked and enjoyed and the whole day and the whole like experience was still really lovely and valuable and relaxing and worthwhile um and then I let it go if I'm being honest because we're all friends here moved on is a bit relative so the next page I did swatches and um that to me looking back is very much a you know I've given up on this sketchbook kind of move like oh I'm just gonna do swatches because you know I've ruined this sketchbook with the paintings that I didn't like in a previous page but I actually really enjoyed the <laughs> doing the swatches. Um, the first ones was just to see the, you know, the shimmer of the paints that I'd got from an art haul. And I can link that video for you because it was a live stream. And we we're trying to like see it shimmer better, you know, like really wanted it to shine. And um, honestly, during the live stream, it wasn't that great. And I don't know, it's almost like the longer time has passed and the longer it took to dry, the better it got. So now it's actually uh, a lot shinier. Still not paints that I would get, but... Um, at least they they shined whereas they didn't during the live stream and then on the right hand side we have the core colors which I just I love I love the way that they run across the page I love the fact that they have personality I love how vibrant and playful and boisterous they are so I did swatches on that page as well and I actually quite enjoyed that process with the greens just being different mixtures that I made based on that set and that's because I love mixing greens and painting landscapes and florals um so yeah this was a very much like a you know <laughs> I don't care about this sketchbook anymore like little mini tantrum but um it got me to open up the sketchbook again which got me excited to use it again and as you can see and can tell because we're still here it made me continue to use it <laughs> so there is a bit of a break and in between I think I completed two other sketchbooks and I can link those sketchbook tours but then we come to this piece or these pieces rather and these were really cool they were all done in five minutes each and essentially I was studying and I was trying to use the Pomodoro technique which is basically where you take 25 minutes to do a task and then you give yourself a five minute break and then another 25 minutes and then a five minute break so on and so forth but um I don't know I feel like sometimes I'm just easily distractible especially with social media like without thinking I'm automatically on Instagram or scrolling or doing something that just doesn't matter so instead of doing that in my five minutes I kind of told myself I could either do something artistic or I could do something like you know like practical like 
I don't know, go and clean a countertop or something. <laughs> but I couldn't just like sit on my phone. So I picked artistic, obviously. So I would study for five minutes. Um, Sorry, I would study for 25 minutes. And then I would do this painting in five minutes, set the timer. And it was of a beautiful floral bouquet that was in front of me. And it was actually really, uh, really lovely. So I did the first one like nice and big. And then the next one I did in watercolour and then in neocolour twos and then in inks. And then finally just combining all of them. And it was just a really nice way to integrate creating art into my day. Like, you know, I could have easily thought and said like, oh no, I'm too busy. I have to study and I have work and I have X, Y and Z. But actually this is an effective way of not only enhancing my studying, but also getting that creative time in and enjoying the process so yeah um this bouquet was a source of a lot of paintings and a source of a lot of inspiration and I hope that you're finding it interesting and helpful to just know the different sketchbook practices that I have just because um you know they've helped me along the way they helped me not only complete the sketchbook but enjoy the process of creating art and I feel like that's ultimately one of the most important things and yes if you want to aim to improve your art and focus on things you can do that too but ultimately I had fun in this sketchbook and I experimented in this sketchbook and I hope that knowing the different ways that I did that is helpful for you too and that bouquet was such a huge source of inspiration for like days to come because every time that I came they changed you know and I wanted to draw them again and paint them again so much so that I actually ended up creating a reference guide full of reference photos of the flowers as they were changing different angles just so that I could go back to them myself and then I shared them with my members now this not only inspired me to use that bouquet but once they had completely wilted I got this bouquet and then another and another and another and then um, especially like peonies because like peony season is quite short and turns out that I just love the way that they look I love the way that they change so I just used that whole period of like um, peony season to actually use that excuse to buy myself flowers I don't know why it took me so long to do it given that I love painting flowers but honestly it was a game changer and it was just so much fun to actually be able to paint them and draw them and be inspired day in and day out and then these are two pieces that I created as a result again looking at them and I think very loosely like I'm not photorealistic obviously um, and I think that sometimes when I try to focus too much on a reference I end up losing the essence of the reference I don't enjoy the process as much so my aim of this was just to look see uh, an element or component that I like and then incorporate that in my painting as opposed to paint the whole bouquet if that makes sense so that's pretty much what I did and with the painting on the right I actually did a one line drawing first and then went over it with paint afterwards and again I just I really enjoy one line drawings um something that's fun easy to do that warms you up and really gets you to see your reference and to think about where you're going next especially because I find that if I hesitate obviously it depends on what pen or whatever you're using but if I hesitate it um, almost like the ink pours and it draws extra <laughs> extra attention to that area which isn't necessarily what I want to do if it's an area that I'm hesitating in all this to say another fun exercise to do is one line drawings timed drawings and then go over paint it add extra details and just also just get inspiration from live references you know from actual things set up a still life buy yourself flowers and um, paint your art supplies and just see what happens and my love affair with flowers continued where I was inspired by the colours of the bouquet to create the piece on the left, whereas the piece on the right I actually created while on a Zoom call with my little sister. So she was creating her like massive, expressive, meaningful <laughs> acrylic painting and I was creating my cute little florals during our Zoom session and just like chatting and talking about art supplies, life. Um, it's something that we had talked about doing for ages, but we just had you know just hadn't got round to it so finally did and it was just so much fun and I had such a good time and I was I guess more focused on the conversation and laughing and um, chatting than actually painting and so I kind of used it as a meditative exercise to just add all those little details and add colours and just I don't know I think I wasn't really thinking about the piece itself <laughs> more so than just actually having fun with my sister and I don't know I don't know if that's why it's so bright and colourful and joyful 
And then the next piece, which is this floral scene, in the end I managed to save, but I don't know, there was something wrong with this specific page with regards to, I don't know if it's the sizing, I don't know what happened, but the watercolour just wouldn't lay on the way that it had been before and the way that it should. And I tried, I left it for like a few months. <laughs> I came which I rarely do but like I, my intention was to just leave it like that but then when I came back I was like I just hate this page so actually I tried with watercolor again and still it wouldn't work and I could have added gouache and other things but in the end I actually just decided to go over it with a brush marker to outline the loose watercolor florals that I had done and I'm happy with the results finally um, but yeah it's completely different to what I wanted to do I wanted to build up layer upon layer upon layer upon layer but it was just repelling the watercolor tried as I might and um um, yeah I mean I'm glad I came back I'm happy with the final results it's just different to what I initially wanted to do and I can't explain why because the rest of the paper was completely fine as in the rest of the paper in the sketchbooks is just this bit that um, was really fighting me and then on the right I painted this lovely landscape again from my imagination I believe using the Daniel Smith gouache so basically as soon as I started painting with Daniel Smith gouache and with gouache in general I couldn't put it down so I ended up sprinkling like little gouache landscapes here there and everywhere and this is actually a piece that I had created towards the end of my sketchbook but because there was a plain empty page here and I didn't want to waste it I came back and I created this lovely landscape which was in part as I mentioned from my imagination and the thing that strikes me about it is that there's a lot of dry brush which is interesting because obviously the paper itself is quite smooth so it was nice to actually try and get all these textures even with a smooth paper and knowing that it is achievable um, and also it felt like a nod to the good old days because back in the day I used to paint with gouache on smooth hot press paper and it's only within the last few like more recently that I started using cold press paper which is my preferred um, paper now. Now next I did a live stream where I essentially shared some of the incredible art supplies that Christy Rice very kindly gifted to me you probably know her already I'll leave her YouTube channel link down below but as well as creating art YouTube videos she makes really wonderful art supplies which I will also leave linked down below and I had been trying to get my hands on for absolute ages um, but it's only more recently that they're more easily available in Europe. So for this live stream I not only unboxed these art supplies but then actually painted with them and I must admit I, must admit, I don't feel like my paintings did them justice. I do feel like the um, the Art for Joy Sake palette has a really unique palette that I still need to like get to grasps with. Um, so I used a very limited colour palette when creating these pieces, focusing on world watercolour prompts, but focusing on actually incorporating flowers and that limited palette into it. And also just taking the ideas and suggestions of people who are watching during the live stream, because as I say, the beauty of it is getting to paint and create together. So if you are looking for for palettes with beautiful designs on them if you're looking for dagger brushes if you want to support a female owned business if you love art supplies as much as I do then be sure to check out the links down below and Christy Rice's YouTube channel for more. Now speaking of making art for joy's sake this page was actually created during one of the live stream sessions with my members and it was created in multiple parts so the first bit was um essentially doing exercises really quickly like draw without uh, lifting your pen up draw without looking at this draw in this kind of period of time and we filled up the page with all these different references that I had created and then I set another timer this time focusing on adding color and um, I, <laughs> I honestly just used it as an opportunity to just make a really fun pattern add as much color as I could and it was a warm-up exercise which is quite different for me to do in like like I said sketchbooks like this but this whole sketchbook was just like a have fun don't think about it experiment the paper smooth try new things <laughs> kind of sketchbook so I did that and then that led on to our second exercise which was focused on kind of doing the same so this time it was in reverse so rather than putting the line down first we actually put the color down first and filled up the whole page with all these interesting shapes and then set another timer this time focused on using different suppliers for each seashell to add the details to kind of bring the whole thing together and it was great because it was an opportunity to 
learn and figure out what kind of materials go on top of watercolor or go on top of you know other materials what kind of colors do we like what kind of different compositions do we like each seashell although I was kind of doing you know the rough shape I was also dropping in colors into them to kind of see what kind of interesting mixes I could get so the whole page <laughs> was a a lot of experimentation, a lot of fun. And I really like the funky, cool pattern that we got at the end. But even more than that, like looking through it, I could see like, oh, okay, I really like the way that Posca works with X, Y, and Z. And I like the way that Neo Color 2s go down. And I like that I can use pit pens to reactivate Neo Color 2s. And just all these things that wouldn't necessarily come to mind if I was just using art supplies the way that I thought they were meant to be used. And I put all of that together to create this piece which was our final piece from the session and again a lot of fun to put together a lot of experimentation really thinking about okay well what colors did I like that worked together in the previous one thinking about like complementary colors thinking about the granulating colors and also despite them being on smooth paper there was just so much granulation and this was I believe using our favorites palette um, which is a palette that I put together with my members selecting all our favorite colors and one of them was I believe Sonia's French ultramarine and um, and that granulated beautifully so the whole thing was just a really lovely fun day and the replay is still available if you are a member just in case you want to follow along try it yourself and see what results you get then following that we get to this so this is when I officially was like trying wash again and I was like I love it so much I can't stop so funny because time really does fly and when it like is all said and done it ended up being six months where I didn't paint with gouache and you have to understand I had like many other sketchbooks like I have many sketchbooks going at the same time I started and completed many sketchbooks while this one was still ongoing so in between I went through like very much another watercolor phase and a mixed media phase but then I ended up coming back to my gouache phase and this was using the Daniel Smith gouache which I was really really enjoying but not only that it was inspired by the fact that Sarah Burns who is a wonderful artist who's also here on YouTube was joining my membership to um to essentially host a zoom session we were going to be painting together and live streaming our session and I didn't want the first time that I start painting with gouache again <laughs> to be next to like to have my painting directly compared to Sarah so I was like no I need to like I need to at least do one painting and then one painting turned into two turned into three turned into four turned into like I can't stop I love it so much um so that's essentially how I created these pieces and I do also have a gouache landscape course just in case you want to know more and see more I just love the versatility of gouache like I really do and I think it just leans itself so beautifully when painting landscapes and then that leads us on to this one so this piece I actually created during another members only session and essentially it's because people couldn't attend this one the seashell one and um, a few people asked for another session so I was like yeah sure again kind of themed around summer-esque so seashell for beaches summer <laughs> and then this one was all around ice creams the replay for this is also available if you want to follow it along and I also created a separate video just highlighting some of the exercises that we did here. As it so happens this warm-up page from the ice creams is one of my favorites from that session where we essentially used one line drawings first and then timed adding paint afterwards and I just loved the way that it all came together and we continued with those exercises and the replay and the video that I created will also be available on my Kofi for members you just I believe have to type in ice cream and it should come up but it was putting into practice some of the exercises that we had done in the seashell session so starting off with line first in that page that I absolutely love and then adding watercolor whereas with this page I think it was timed and then this one was again like the seashell pattern one that I'm showing you here adding the watercolors first getting blends seeing different color mixes and then after that going over it with neo color twos or pens or whatever materials we had to hand and seeing what different colors we like together what different materials work well together and having a pretty page at the end as I mentioned, Sarah Burns joined us for a wonderful live stream session during which we painted her reference photo, which she had taken. And this 
page on the left is essentially the painting that I created during that live stream and it was just so much fun. I find that, I don't know, when I look at my paintings, I can tell the paintings where my attention was split focus. Does that make sense? Like the ones where I'm in the cafe, where I'm painting with others, they're not always necessarily my finest work, but they bring back good memories. <laughs> I just need to marry that with it actually being my you know better work and then um I just had such a good time I felt so inspired she's so absolutely amazing I feel like obviously you already know her but if you don't know Sarah Burn Studio and you love creating landscapes you love gouache you love watercolor um then I highly highly recommend that you check out her YouTube channel as well as her Patreon so the painting on the left was definitely a challenge for me I just kind of dove into it without any pre-thought <laughs> as I tend to with most of my paintings um, but that being said as soon as we finished the live stream I wanted to do it again like I knew that I could do it better and I found it I don't know I was intrigued by the challenge if you will so with the second one which is the one on the right the smaller one I actually used a limited palette of four four Daniel Smith gouache colors as well as a white and I just much preferred the the final results I kind of felt like the colors were neater I had a bit of a better understanding of the tonal values and I don't know I feel like it worked uh, a lot better so both are available the live stream replay if you're interested and you want to see Sarah's version as well and hear us chatting about art supplies gouache and all that she has planned as you watch us paint the reference but I have also created a separate video where I highlight the process of creating the painting on the right. Following that, oh, I absolutely love this <laughs> this page um, because it just brings back such great memories where I essentially went to a wonderful park in London and while there I sketched the view. So I started off with the painting on the top left, then bottom left, and then when I was at home, the painting on the right. Um, and there's, yeah, I mean, they bring back great memories. I used the Daniel Smith gouache again. I was really trying to get familiar with it and also I was just enjoying it. Like I find that when I'm enjoying something, I just don't want to stop and when I see opportunities to use them I do. The trunk on the right was really challenging to try and to try and depict all the texture that's on the bark and it's so funny because obviously I'm in a stunning park that has like beautiful landscapes and flowers and things around and I'm like oh that dead tree I want to paint that dead tree. <laughs> um, so I painted the landscape and the view first and then took a few pictures of the tree which I then painted while at home and I just love the whole spread because it um, just reminds me of a really lovely day and I love the way the paintings look as well. And then these paintings still with the Daniel Smith gouache like you can see that I was really just going through it. Um, I don't know I, I don't know about making a review I guess I've used it enough that I could make that let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in. And these paintings I created during a live session with my members again so the replay will also be available and it was just fun. I, I enjoy painting landscapes I enjoyed using gouache and putting them together while chatting with awesome people just was an awesome day. I remember the top painting in particular because I was like talking through my process and we were creating it together and obviously I work from background to foreground and I just remember like we've got this really lovely landscape and now we've got to go over it and create a fence which kind of felt wild but it massively paid off and it's so funny and nice looking back on this sketchbook and just being reminded of all these wonderful times that I had creating art with my members, with friends, with family and um, just all the fun memories that this sketchbook holds and and I am so glad that I used it I'm so glad that I completed it I'm so glad that it houses all these wonderful memories and in terms of like you know answering the question of what's the best sketchbook I think ultimately the best sketchbook for you is the sketchbook that you will actually use <laughs> And I am so excited to take the lessons that I learned from this sketchbook and apply it to other sketchbooks where I love, 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 love the paper too. Um, remember that if you want this sketchbook or the cold press sketchbook, which is my personal favourite, or any art supply by Etcher, then you can use the code SKETCHES10 to get 10% off. If you are interested in us painting together, joining live streams and Zoom sessions, being part of an art community, um, having art challenges, 
exclusive videos and so much more if you just want to spend time creating art with others then I highly recommend my membership which I will leave linked down below for you as well and if you're still watching you already know that you are a real MVP and I really 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 appreciate you let me know that you are still watching by telling me your favorite kind of paper or surface to work on and if you remember the question from earlier where I asked you whether you work in sketchbooks in order or out of order and you feel like letting me know then I would love to know that too. I am especially curious because one I want to know who my real MVPs are and two I'm always curious to know if people actually enjoy sketchbook tours or not so knowing that you enjoyed the video and that you got to the end will help me know that actually it's worth continuing to make these sketchbook tour videos. Now I didn't miss out the last one by accident it was actually created during a session where Christy Rice kindly joined my members and I for a zoom session and during the session she gave us lots of exercises she was very open about her art style and her painting process and creation process which was super helpful and also super fun. Once that session ended and she left we didn't want to end this session so we actually extended it and I put what she'd taught in that session combined it with my I guess pre-existing style if you like and um, just casually created this painting as everyone was just chatting and painting and um, we continued the session for a further two hours. <laughs> Um, but yeah honestly I really appreciate you watching I appreciate all the lovely comments all the support that I have received from everyone who's watching my YouTube videos every single Kofi member both past and current and new um, I can't thank you all enough for all your incredible support so <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did you will definitely love these series of other sketchbook videos that I have created but if you want more about art supplies and my favourite supplies then I will leave that video linked for you too. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!